Hello YouTube, just wanted to show you my latest uh, mod. What I've done with this setup right here is I can record over eight hours in a single shot. So I've gotten eight and a half hours in my test so far and I'll show you guys exactly what I did and if you want to do this with your helmet, stay tuned. Alright, so what I have here is a collection of cameras. I just wanted to show off what I currently kind of have. I had a couple more GoPros, but one of them was really old, but the lens was good. And the other one, I had a second Hero 2, but I scratched the lens somehow. I don't know, rock hit it or I dropped it or something. So I tried to take the lens out of the old Hero 1, put it in the Hero 2, and I ended up breaking the lens in the Hero 1. And since the Hero 2 lens was already destroyed, I just pitched it in the trash. So, so I'm down to two GoPros and I wanted to replace them with something a little better. Um, the batteries are kind of shot in these and, um, and I really wanted to try the image stabilization. So that's where I picked this one up. This is an AS100V and uh, I did like the image stabilization. It does take good image quality, good night vision but the battery life is pretty poor like most of these action cams and there's a bunch of other things I don't like about it that I'll go into but I scratched the lens on this one too I don't you can't see it here but it's scratched I don't know how I did it it wasn't on the bike it was when I was I don't know downloading videos off of it or something that maybe it fell on the floor I didn't who knows how I scratched it but I scratched it pissed me off so I replaced it with this camera AS 200 feet. I didn't want to have to buy another one of these, but you know, what can you do? At that point, I was kind of committed to trying to make this uh, camera work, but I hated the, the battery life. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to uh, make this thing record for at least eight hours. I mean, it's 2015. It shouldn't be that hard to make these things record for eight hours, right? I mean, honestly. So as you can see, I got a lens protector on it. I keep this on it when the camera is not in the housing. Let me show you the housing. This housing is heavily modified, as you can see, or butchered, as other people would say, well used. Um, I drilled the holes in it because this thing would overheat. It gets really hot here in Vegas. That seemed to help. Um, I drilled a square hole here. I was gonna try to use a heat sink. There, I had this heat sink laying around. I thought I could put the heat sink on there and it would push against the side of the camera because this part right here is what gets really hot on these cameras, but, um, and it doesn't work that good. And really, I think I think just having having the airflow works good enough. This hole is for the external mic mat, a mod. So so let's get into this mod. Let's get how do how do I get eight hours of record time out of this camera? So so let's look at this one right here. So this is the standard Sony battery. Standard crappy little battery. It's like 1,200 milliwatt amp uh, hours, I think. 1240 it says. I don't know if you can see that, but 1240. Okay, so my first attempt at trying to make these cameras record for a really long time was, was taking a boost pack like this one. This one is, uh, this one's pretty cool because it will actually jump start a motorcycle. It's got a light in it. Um, and it's got, you can see the, the power level of it. it. Comes with this little cable. So what you do, this is what I first tried to do, is I took the cable, I have a longer one of these, and then I stuck this in my Camelback, plugged this into the camera, and with this, you could get a really long record time, but the fatal flaw in this system is this crappy micro USB. This is complete garbage connector. Um, the vibration between, and then this connector too is also very bad. I tried zi uh, putting zip ties around it, zip tying this, Velcro, uh, Gorilla Tape, more zip ties, more Velcro, everything to keep these two connectors um, from moving, and it's just not possible. Um, this connector sucks. Micro USB connectors are absolute garbage, so that just wasn't going to work. So I abandoned that idea. And then what I did, what I came across was, is 
it's an adapter for this battery. Apparently this is a, a fairly common battery. It's the X, the Sony X type. And so what you can buy on Amazon is this. Get this out of the way. So what this is, it's an adapter. So you, so you stick this in your camera, you plug this in here, you plug this in the wall, I bought two of them because I was convinced I would destroy one of them during this process, but I didn't, so I have a spare now. So what I did is I cut it right here, and then what I did, okay, let me put this, I'll put this in the camera so you can see how it works. We'll put it in the, uh, the scratch up lens one. So you take this, I mean, you guys know how this works, plug it in there. You got to take a Dremel, you got to Dremel out the side of your camera. So if you, if you don't want to modify your camera, this isn't for you. Now you got this. Now you take this battery. It comes with this connector. It actually comes with um, this connector right here when you buy these batteries. You can buy these. These are Turnagees. They're uh, a single cell 3.7, which is the same as these. It's just way more. This is uh, 6,000 milliwatt, milliwatt hours. Is that right? Yeah, six milliamp, I'm sorry, milliamp hour, milliwatt. Okay, and this is 1200. And there's something else going on too, because this is, I don't know, it looks more than six times bigger, but maybe it's not. Anyways, so you take this, uh, where's this thing right here? You cut this, you cut this off, you solder them together. You get this. Put some heat shrink on it. Now you have this. Now you got your camera. You plug in your camera. You turn it on. Now this one's a little dead, and boom. The camera does not know a difference. It has no idea that it's being powered by a big monster battery now. And now you can get eight and a half hours out of this sucker. I think this is um, this is going to be really cool, and I've actually the one thing I have noticed though is these Sony's if they don't have any airflow on them they will shut off due to heat. Like when I first did this, the camera kept turning off after about two hours, and and I was super disappointed. So I actually um, set up another camera to watch it to see why it was shutting off, and it was shutting off due to heat. But if you just have a slight breeze blowing on this camera, it's like I set up a fan and, and it was the fan was a good five feet away from the camera and just that slight breeze kept this camera from shutting off ever. And I was able to get eight and a half hours of record time. So let's unplug this one. So now this is a good camera right here. This is the uh, AS200V. Supposedly it has a slightly better image stabilization than the AS100V. I don't, I don't know if that's true or not. I'll put this setup on the helmet. You can see how, how it all works on the helmet. It's beautiful. Um, it's completely con contained on a helmet. Um, no wires going down to the, to the camelback. Nothing comes loose. Nothing rattles around. The camera doesn't shut off. Um, this is working out pretty good so far. So, All right, let's talk about the modifications you got to do to your camera to make this work. This lens cover is on here just so I don't scratch this lens just while I'm handling it. Okay, so so I took the doors off. Um, that way I can charge the camera when it's in its in its case. I cut holes in the bottom of it so I can charge it. I can plug in the microphone jack. These holes are for air so it doesn't overheat. More air holes, and this hole is so that the cord um, will fit. And I'll do that in a second. Okay, so. So on the, on the camera here, you got to modify this. So you got to Dremel out this. You got to Dremel out a slot for it to fit in here. And then what you do is you take your battery adapter, plug it in. Did I put it in the right way? No, I didn't. Okay, plug it in. Put it right there. Close your door and it still works. Everything locks good. Obviously it's not splash proof anymore, but we don't care about splash proof. So we're going to take off the lens cover. 
And then what you gotta do is you gotta back through there. Okay. There it is. See how that goes like that? Okay, so let's go ahead and put on the helmet now. I'll show you how the whole system works on the helmet. All right, so this is the helmet mount. I do recommend you buy the helmet mount because it's very difficult to mount this camera to a helmet without it. I don't know what Sony was thinking when they designed this, but whatever. Okay, so this is gonna go, you can tighten it up to tilt it left and right. Okay, here's a shot from the underside, and you can see where I uh, dremeled out the bottom of the case so that I can plug in a USB. It's an extremely tight fit. It's a horrible design. I don't know what Sony was thinking when they built this camera. I mean, technologically, it's, it's amazing. Good image quality, Wi-Fi, all kinds of features. Probably too many features. Um, but... Man, Sony, why don't you put the the power, like an external power? I mean, it should come with this, right? This shouldn't be something that I have to modify. I mean, it's 2015, making a camera run eight hours shouldn't be that difficult. Um, the USB, micro USB garbage port, at least when Type-C comes out, that'll be an improvement. Put it on the back of the camera. It should have a little door so you can plug it in, power your camera the whole time. The external mic, that should be on the back of the camera. This on off button, horrible design. It should be something like a big slider on the top that you can feel with gloves. That you can just reach up and go click. Nope, couldn't do it, could you Sony? Um, these buttons, pretty horrible. The menu is horrible. So ergonomically, the, this camera gets a huge fail. But technologically, with the image quality and the image stabilization, it's it's a pretty awesome camera, so I guess you gotta take the good with the bad. Okay, let's show, I'll show you the final setup. Here it is on my pretty beat up a Suomi uh, dual sport helmet. It's a pretty light helmet. Now, I guess I should weigh this for you guys, but I'll weigh that for you in a minute with everything on there. So I got, I got the Sony camera on here. This is the external mic. It just runs down into the padding of the helmet. Um, on the other side, we have a, a, a Senna 20S, I believe it is. Um, it does have a little external antenna that flips up. It's a little tight. The shape of this helmet makes this a little tight right here, but it's a pretty light unit and uh, it only works line of sight, but it does, as long as you stay in line of sight, it works really well, has good, good sound quality. Now this is the battery on the back. And then here's a little more dual lock that's just keeping this cable from flipping around. Very simple design. And uh, this is this is the final setup. So the Sony weighs 89.3. So let's weigh the batteries. 22.1. Twenty-four point nine, twenty-four point six. So the Sony batteries weigh a little bit more than the Vivitar. All right, that's interesting. This this battery, which has some dual lock on the back of it, so that probably adds a tiny bit. Okay, so the battery alone weighs weighs one forty-six, and the GoPro only weighed a hundred, right? Yep, a hundred. And with that, so we're looking at 210. So we're basically the weight of two GoPros. There we go. That's my cat's tail in the way. So 236.6. And the GoPro is basically 100.4. Okay, I wanted to show you that you can charge this without buying an external LiPo charger. Um, all you gotta do is this camera will charge these big batteries. 
it'll take a while. I think it'll take like six hours because I believe this camera only charges at an amp. Could be wrong though. I have no way of measuring that. Um, uh, if you buy a charger, you can charge them at six amps and that takes about an hour. So I'm just guessing this will take six hours. Anyways, here's what you do. You take your charger. This is just a six port USB charger. Here's your crappy micro USB connector. Plug it in. And in a few seconds, we should see the charge light come on. Come off. There it goes. So there you go, crappy USB connector. Plus it is, I don't know, this connector has been well used, so. Anyway, so there's the light, let's turn it off. So now it is charging this battery. And I have tested it, I've left it like this for an hour and it did charge the battery. So, again, LiPo is a LiPo. A one cell LiPo is a one cell LiPo, apparently. Which is uh, something I just learned recently. And if I'm wrong, someone will correct me. So, that's it. You don't need a... And the chargers are only 50 bucks, so... Or, yeah, 50 to 100 bucks, so... If you're going to be charging a couple of these, um, probably better off buying the charger. But, this will get you by. Just a battery and this mod, and uh, you're in business. Alright, let me show you this charger, how it, how it works. This is just the one I got. Um, Any one will work. There's tons of these. This one got good reviews, so it wasn't that expensive. And I, I didn't know at the time that I would be able to charge these batteries using the uh, camera. So, so you get your battery here. You can use the balanced charging. Read all about that if you have multiple cell batteries. And, but this is a single cell, so make sure you go to red to positive. I gotta do this one-handed, so let's see here. There's red to positive, black to negative. Okay. You should put this in a uh, LiPo bag so that it doesn't catch on fire if you set something wrong. So now we got some different things on here. See here. Here's a battery meter. So it's 4.21. So this one's uh, almost fully charged. And then what you can do is, is you just pick a LiPo. Um, this is a, a, a 6,000 milliwatt, so you can charge it at 6 amps. So you crank it up to 6 amps. It's one cell. If you do more cells, it'll tell you, it'll, it'll just say, uh, I don't think so. I think it will. I didn't try it, but I was reading through the manual and it sounds like um, it's pretty intelligent. It knows if you hook it up wrong and uh, if you hook it up backwards, it'll tell you. So that's pretty cool. Hit enter. And then in order to start the charging, hold the enter, it checks it, and it says, do you want to confirm? And now it's charging. So, very simple to use. Um, pretty nice unit. Another thing this unit does, which is good, is you can, you can do storage. And apparently LiPo's... Um, if you're going to store them for a long time, if you store them at uh, a voltage somewhere in between fully charged and uh, fully depleted, they last the longest. So, so if you know you're not going to use them for a while, you can do storage. This thing will discharge. It'll. What else will it do? Fast charge. I wouldn't recommend fast charge because I heard it's hard on your batteries. It's got all the different batteries. Battery meter. It'll even check resistance. 34 milliohms. I believe that's what that is. I have no idea if that's good or not. Um, you can store different batteries in here. Anyways, it seems like a pretty nice unit. Okay, since I'm talking about the Sony Action Cams, I'll show you guys how to get the GPS maps on your videos. Um, the first program I tried was the Sony Play Memories Home. Uh, don't waste your time with this useless program. I can't see any reason anyone would want to use this program. It, they say it's for managing movies and pictures, but again, I can just save the files on my hard drive, right? And uh, and just play them with a VLC player. Yeah, it plays videos, I guess, but I don't know. I don't see a reason for this program. So let's move on uh, to a program you might actually want to use. Okay, now this is uh, Sony's Action Cam Movie Creator. 
This program is what you're going to have to use if you want the GPS data on your videos. And I'll show you how you do it. First thing you got to do is you got to import the media files. I tried just copying the files directly from my camera to my hard drive and then and then using this program and it didn't seem to work. Maybe I did something wrong, but I do believe you have to go through this import process. So once you've imported your videos, and I did this a while ago, and I remember it took a long time, um, then you go click on this one and this is how you do the GPS data. And so if you've done it correctly, it will, um, it will import, it'll show the videos here. It's loading, it's thinking. Okay, here it comes. Um, it'll and see this little speedometer right here so this means that there is GPS data inside your video so that means you imported it correctly and you had your uh, your GPS data turned on when you when you took the video okay so then what you do is you can drag up to four clips over here and and what that allows is you can have four clips playing simultaneously now I'm just gonna drag two over just to show you what it does personally I don't think you'll ever use this feature it seems stupid to me I would just drag one clip over uh, put the GPS data on it save it and then use a real uh, video editor to uh, to turn it into what you want but I'm gonna do two clips just to show you what it does and also as I mentioned this program is extremely slow so while we're talking about how slow this program is um, let's talk about something else Sony Sony's a funny company they're huge they got tons of money and they also make a video editing program. It's a pretty good one. You might have heard of it. It's called Sony Vegas. Um, but yet, for some strange reason, they decided that they needed to create an entirely new one for their action cam. So that's why they created this action cam movie creator. But it makes no sense to me because it seems like they could have uh, done a lot better job by just... Uh, when they sell these action cams, why don't they just bundle a light version of... Uh, of movie studio which is the consumer version of Sony Vegas and then just write a plugin so that you can put this GPS data on your videos using movie studio and then people would learn to like movie studio they they might even upgrade to Vegas Pro at some point if they got used to it so but no instead they spent God knows how much money on making this this useless program okay so so now now that it's loaded up what you see is we've got the main clip and then you got the sub clip here and then you got these different options here and you can so right now it's in the top top right corner you can move it around to the different corners you can do this side by side view you got up and down why anybody would want to do this I have no idea the only there's one possible scenario you might want to do this is if you were doing a track day and you had one video forward and one video back and you like you had two video cameras and you wanted to show the forward and then you wanted to show like a rear, rear view uh, mirror type thing and you can see if you hit play again this program is very slow they, they both play at the same time and you can export them out like this again I have no idea why why you would ever want to do this but even in the the one scenario where let's say you wanted a rear view mirror camera you would just do that in a regular video editing program and it's it's really easy to sync your videos up so so th this is like pointless to me so anyways that's why I don't think you'll ever want to drag two videos over here so let's go back let's remove one of them okay now this you might actually want to do so we'll, we'll bring it back into the whatever this whatever this is called okay so now so we got our video and you can see the GPS data it does work clicks along um, you can trim it I think is it gonna play hello 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 I mean I know I'm screen recording and that that does take a little bit of CPU uh, energy away from my computer but come on this program I mean Vegas Pro runs way better when I screen record so anyways um, this GPS map right here um, just so you know it stays the same size whether you go two blocks or two miles or whatever so that was kinda of disappointing and then you only have three layouts for the GPS here you got none which is if you're gonna use none then why are you using this program you got this layout horrible this layout 
still terrible. This layout, that's really ugly speedometer. So I guess this is the least horrible of the group, but I, I don't like how the real estate it takes up. I don't like how this transparency. I mean, what if I just wanted to show this? What if I just wanted to show this? I mean, it's pretty limited. Uh, it's it's a lot of work because after you do this, then you have to go next, and then you can export it out to these various um, uh, formats. You would never use this 720 at 2.25 megabits a second. That's terrible. This is the only one I would even attempt, and um, it just it seems like more of a novelty. It's like a a lot of expense for. For I mean, I just can't see a lot of people using this, but. Anyways, that's how you do the GPS feature on your videos. And since I got this program up, let's talk about this second uh, feature right here, which is uh, combining multiple videos. And this reminds me a lot of the GoPro Studio. You basically just drag a few clips over, hit next. And again, I've never actually used this to make a video, but since I'm here and I'm recording and I got everything set up, let's just play around with it for five seconds again I would never use this program unless I had no alternative so you can just drag the multiple clips over here and then you can trim it and I guess you can change the speed of it repeat I imagine if you wanted to I have no idea what does this do why would you want to repeat something over and over again captions okay um and then you hit next and then you can you got three options to save it out so it's pretty limited of course this is the only one I would use the, the 25 megabits a second um, and what's funny is uh, is it gonna work come on computer alright so see how there's no GPS data so if you wanted the GPS data so if you really wanted if you're just using this program you'd have to go back to to this one do your GPS data save the files and then you'd have to go to this one you'd have to take the the saved files that had the GPS data on the screen now because you rendered them out and then and then you combine them together the way you want it and that's how you would have to make your your final video if you were using this program so I'm not very impressed with this program I think again Sony would have been much wiser to uh, invest their money into uh, movie studio and Vegas Pro and just created a plugin so that when you're using a Sony action cam you can display the GPS data on your video but instead they decided to create an entirely new program that hardly anybody's going to use good job Sony all right let's do some final thoughts on this whole whole setup this whole long journey to get to where I am right now so um, let's talk about the current state of action cams as of 2015 right now. Right now GoPro and Sony are the two two kings. This is only Hero 2. They're out to the Hero 4 Black. 4K. Um, I don't think 4K is needed right now. 1080 60 frames per second is, uh, is well worth it though because YouTube when you upload at as of right now if you upload 1080 60 you actually get a higher bit rate than if you upload at 1080 30 and I think 1080 60 looks better. It's not such a huge leap that uh, it just kills your computer or kills your uh, storage 4k though, I can't even play videos on YouTube at 4k and I have an okay computer. It's a little old um, I don't know At 4k. I'm sure I have no doubt will become the standard But as as of right now, it just seems like complete overkill for just an average person so why did I pick the Sony over the GoPro? Well, I don't know that I really picked either, but um, uh, I wanted the image stabilization stabilization of the Sony. This that is Sony is the only one that offers this image stabilization, and I think that is uh, well worth it. I like how um, if you look on the videos, uh, how the helmet moves a little bit, and the camera is kind of like floating out in the middle of nowhere. I kind of like that effect and um, it definitely is a lot easier on the eyes to watch a video that's been um, image stabilized and if you try to do it in your uh, software editor software editor like uh, Premiere or Sony Vegas or Movie Studio the consumer version of Sony Vegas it takes forever so 
So really the only way to get to image stabilization right now is for it to be done in camera in real time. And Sony is the only camera that does that right now. That's the one thing that Sony has on the competition right now. The GoPros and the Sonys and the Drifts and, and all the other ones, they all have good image quality. They all look pretty good at night. They all shoot 1080. Most of them shoot 1080 at 60 frames per second. That's, that's something that is a requirement for me if I'm going to spend the money on a camera. Uh, all of them have crappy battery life. although the GoPro now, I saw uh, a backpack for the GoPro made by uh, uh, another vendor that, that greatly extended the life of the GoPro. So that's kind of cool. So GoPro really does have a lot of uh, accessories. Now the, the shape of, the, of both these cameras is kind of hit or miss, right? Now the Sony is slimmer, obviously better on the side of the helmet. The GoPro, obviously better right here on the front of the helmet. And this is, I think this is the ideal spot for a helmet right here, for a cam. But no image stabilization. So that leaves the Sony, right? Um, now let's talk about these Sony cameras. Now these cameras are awesome in some ways and then they're completely designed by idiots in other ways. So like the electronics, amazing. The, uh, the image quality, amazing. The fact it does image stabilization in real time, amazing. The menu setup, terrible, slow, unresponsive. Come on, come on. Oh, there it goes. Um, the only settings you're gonna use for this thing, really, in my opinion, is you're gonna want the image stabilization on. So in order for that to be on, you have to use a certain um, resolution. I'll show you what it is. So here's video mode. P5, 60 frames per second. That's the only video mode I would ever use. This one doesn't do the 4K. If you go into config, Wi-Fi, uh, I can show you the remote here in a little bit, but um, let's see here. Format, language, date, beep. Uh, I mean, none of these settings. I don't care about, and the GPS, a joke, I wouldn't use it. Wi-Fi I do use just for the remote to turn on and off. I don't know how much it affects the battery life. See, it's, ah, oh, this menu. Where's back? There's back. Uh, scene, we don't care, lapse, angle. With the angle, you have to use 120, otherwise the image stabilization doesn't work. If you do 170, it, it turns off the image stabilization. So you're stuck with 120. Uh, if we go to setup, White balance, scene, flip, lapse, angle, self, V drive, wind. There it is, video format. This is what I was looking for. Okay, so MP4 gets you a lot more record time, and HD only gets you like five and a half hours, and then it dies. Whereas, whereas MP4, I think you can get like 10 hours of record time. Now, the HD does look better, it, it, but by the time you upload it to YouTube, the differences are pretty neg negligible so I don't know I'm gonna I'm gonna try I don't know what I'll do but I guess it depends how long I think I'm gonna be shooting for okay so the menu's crap the layout of this camera is terrible well I mean really they needed a big switch on the top that you can feel with gloves on you slide it forward it's on you slide it back it's off nope couldn't do that um, Micro USB, complete garbage. At least the, Sony, the uh, GoPros use, use the, uh, the mini USB, which is quite a bit stronger, although it is a bigger connector. Um, mic jack here with these doors, terrible. You gotta cut up your case just to use it with an external mic, terrible design. I mean, both of these ports should be on the back. It should come with a nice external power thing so you can just plug it. I mean, think about, Sony. All they gotta do is they buy this battery, they slap Sony on it, they, they add 100% to the price of it, they put a plug on the back of it, they'd make a killing. But no, didn't do that. And uh, something else that's sad with these, with these action cameras is, is why hasn't GoPro or Sony, I mean they got, they got billions of dollars, right? I mean crazy amounts of money. Why don't they team up with a helmet manufacturer Suomi or Shoei or Scorpion or whoever. Have a helmet manufacturer cut out a spot in the front of this where the GoPro fits right in. 
I mean, you got the room here. The GoPro should be in the helmet, perfectly mounted in here. They could come out with a GoPro 5. We could have a little mic right on the back of the GoPro. You stick it in, boom. That's what people want. Why haven't they made that? I have no idea. It's, it's just insane to me that they haven't done this. Sony sells this thing. It doesn't even come with a helmet mount. You gotta buy that separate. That's terrible. It doesn't come with a little lens protector. You gotta buy that separate. You don't wanna damage your lens. Which I, I guess they're making money by selling this stuff separate. Um, just very poorly thought out. The thing gets way too hot. If there's no airflow, the thing overheats. That's terrible. Why don't they have, this thing should come with heat sinks on it. Right? I mean, Sony makes all kinds of electronic stuff. Tons, I mean, they probably got a warehouse full of all different heat sinks. They could have put one on the side. I mean, even a little, um, if you look at this one camera, it's called a um, Mobius, I believe. It's this little tiny action cam, it's got two little metal pads on it to try to dissipate the heat. Very inexpensive camera. The fact that this overheats in my house, if there's no airflow on it, is inexcusable. It, it overheats when I'm out in the summertime in Las Vegas. I've looked up the thing. It's just, in 2015 that they made this, it's, it's just a terrible, terrible design. But I guess they don't care. They're selling tons of them. They're making money, so what do they care? All right, let me show you how the live remote works. Okay, we'll show you how the live remote works. This came with the bundle I bought, and it's somewhat handy. So, so what you do, is uh, helps if I get this right. So, so you turn this on, and then you can reach up, and you can hit this button um, with your gloves on the side, and then this little thing comes up. This is actually pretty handy. So you can kind of frame your shot, which is nice. So you hit the record button. Now you know it's recording. Turn this off. If you leave this on, this will die way before this will, especially with this battery now. And then uh, once you're done recording, after, let's say you've ridden around for an hour, you just turn this back on. And then you can turn it off. Camera's off. You can turn your remote off. And the, and the camera will automatically turn off after 60 seconds or 30 seconds, depending what you have it set for. So this is a handy way to, to turn on and off your camera, get it recording. Because here's another, here's another pet peeve design about this, this Sony action cam. Okay, so yeah, it's got an LED here that you can see, and it's got an LED here that you can see. But when it's mounted on the side of the helmet, I can't see either. That is terrible, at least with the GoPro. I wonder if this one's even charged up. Oh, it is. Okay. So with the GoPro, so with the GoPro, when you mount it on your helmet, let me put that in. When it's mounted on the front of your helmet here, you can see in your mirror it's recording. At least that's somewhat decent. And I guess with this, if you have this device, you can see it's recording there, but, but you can't leave this on all the time. You gotta turn it off, otherwise the battery will die. What these, turn this off. So what these camera manufacturers should do in my opinion, is they should have, again, another, it's gonna be mounted on your helmet, right? They should have a little wire someplace you plug it in, probably in the back, and a little LED you can run up and you can put in your helmet, like up here or down here. That way, you'll see the little light flashing and you'll know, yep, it's recording. So, it's simple, it's so simple. Yeah, you got one more little wire, you, can, you, could, you could even use the same wire, like they could sell a mic a helmet mic and it could have another little LED wire in there and, and it could split up once it gets into your helmet and you could mount the little LED right up here so you can see that your camera is recording. I don't know. It just seems like these manufacturers lack imagination when it comes to uh, innovating their cameras. Alright, well that's my rant about um, these cameras but I think I'm going to be pretty happy with this setup. Uh, hope you liked uh, this information. I'll talk to you later.